Now the quarterly update release schedule, this is something that comes out every quarter from Sage. Uh, it's typically on time. We know when it's coming out and everyone is always on the same version. Um, so this is not something where you have to worry about updating the system. The system will automatically have the updates um, given the go live date. So as David said, that would be tomorrow. Um, now, this doesn't mean that all of these features are just going to be instantly unlocked. Now, there may be some things where you have to go in and configure it, um, special setup for some of these releases. So, you know, if you have any questions about that and you're interested in any of that, um, go ahead and reach out to us and we would be happy to help you with, uh, with that configuration step. Now, today we're going to be talking about the new vendor approval feature in AP, matching tolerance for purchasing, AR payment ID, expanding the beta list to other objects, cash management bank transaction assistant, and that is in the early adopter stage, contracts revenue recognition on the invoice line item basis, project budget insight on the project summary screen within your project module, introducing partial ownership through tiered consolidation, uh, still in the early adopter stage, restrict GL transactions to the entity level as a configuration step and locking down your system to uh, make sure that people are posting to where you want them to post. And then also just briefly touching on some enhancements to the Sage Impact Real Estate module. All right, so first up on the list, AP vendor approval. Uh, this is a very exciting uh, update. It's been requested for a long time. Uh, this is uh, gonna add uh, a control feature that many people have, have needed for um, audit purposes or just for efficient workflow. Uh, it does add this security level where uh, in, when someone creates a user, another person would have to review it. If you've used the AP bill approval or AP payment approval workflow or purchasing uh, approval in Intact, it's very, very similar. Uh, so when you would create a new vendor, uh, instead of just hitting saved, it would say submit and it would go on to the uh, assigned approver for uh, that vendor. Um, so <clears throat> if you first turn this on uh, after enabling it, as Michael said, uh, any vendors you currently have will automatically be approved. Since they're existing vendors, the assumption is that uh, any ones that you've already got in there have technically been approved. Uh, however, once you um, turn that on, it'll start that workflow where vendors will get submitted. If you edit a vendor, uh, it will go through the approval workflow as well. Uh, that's important if you're doing things like changing the address, uh, the bank information, if you have that saved in the bank feed uh, profile. Uh, again, these are just good control uh, measures. If uh, remit to and ship to addresses are sensitive, that's definitely a reason why you would want that on the edit stage as well. Uh, so when you create a new vendor uh, and it goes through this approval queue, um, you can actually still enter a bill while it's in that approval queue. The bill would simply uh, be in draft mode and since, uh, instead of posting. So once that vendor is approved, that bill could be fully posted. Uh, so that is a nice feature. You're not going to have your uh, a big backlog of not being able to do anything just because uh, there needs to be that approval step. Um, the another thing about this is uh, many of the features like this, when you turn them on, you can't turn off. This one does have the option to turn it off later. However, there are some things to watch for if you decide you want to try it and then maybe you put a pause on it. If you turn it off, any vendors that are pending approval uh, should be approved and declined before you actually turn it off just to make sure there are no uh, sync issues. Uh, and this approval workflow is only for creating vendors within the Intact UI, so the interface where you're actually logged into Intact. If you have a third-party system or tool that is connecting to Intact via API, like maybe uh, an AP payment tool, like one of our marketplace partners, uh, Bill.com is, is an example, uh, they can still create vendors that would be fully approved via API. So if you have that workflow already and those uh, integrations have permission to create vendors, you would want to consider potentially changing that workflow or if you can manage vendor approval with that third party tool. If you have questions about how that workflow uh, could possibly work, reach out to us because there's definitely ideas. Um, 
One thing that is not yet available, uh, if you're used to doing AP bill or payment approval, you can choose in Intact a, a delegate. So if you're out of office or you need to assign it to someone else. Right now with this vendor approval, you can't currently, currently choose a delegate, but that is upcoming uh, according to Sage. Thanks, David. Yeah, that's something that people have been asking about for a long time is putting some approvals on the creation of vendors, because like you said, it is a great control and even just having someone double check your accuracy. Um, so very excited to see that release come out. Another release that is going to be helpful for people using purchasing is matching tolerances. So this is going to prevent unauthorized purchase reimbursements and also help take control of those outgoing payments for your purchasing. Now, it would depend on your workflow. So when you go in to configure this, you would be able to set it on any number of transaction definitions you have. Um, but what it allows us to do is create matching tolerances. So if we wanna say that a quantity or a price on a specific line item was within a given um, tolerance, we would be able to go ahead and push that transaction through and not have to you know, wait or uh, edit, redo, delete, resend, you know, the different stages of your workflow. Um, so it's a nice thing to have. Also, there will be permissions involved to where um, someone can override that if you, if you want. Um, so there could be special um, people that have the permissions and it says, this is above the 5% tolerance and you can still push it through if that is a need. Um, but this is something that's gonna help speed up workflow and just give that greater uh, control over your purchasing. Yeah, this coupled with the with the AP vendor approval, you know, the ability to queue up bills while it's in that approval status uh, is just a great example of how uh, Sage is clearly thinking about, you know, adding controls that don't also create a backlog and create the uh, often called the great wall of finance, you know, with uh, controls you put up that sort of stop work or prevent things from happening. And then people start looking for loopholes. Uh, so that's really great that they in introduce this kind of um, flexibility uh, that allows uh, control, um, but not slow down work. And we did have some people ask about if this could be a dollar amount. At this stage, it is only a percentage. So that's something to consider as well. Hmm. Uh, next up, AR payment ID number sequencing. So if you're familiar with number sequencing, so the box on the right, you know, all of your invoices have a number sequence. Maybe yours is INV and then six digits. Your uh, customers and vendors have a numbering scheme. So this provides an option to create a scheme for AR payments. And this might not sound very significant, uh, but you'll probably find a reason to want this as you go. Um, you can track payments uh, a little easier if you've had a situation where one payment applies to multiple invoices. It can be a little tricky if you're trying to uh, tie that out uh, when you're exporting it. So um, you could create a custom report based on the payment ID and see which transactions were applied to an invoice. Uh, a use case for this might be uh, when you're doing your audit, uh, like your gap audit. Uh, they do that fun thing where they ask you for sample selections where they want you to prove the entire quote to cash process where you've got the customer contracts, the invoice associated with it, fulfillment, cash receipt, and bank statement tie out. It's that cash receipt and bank statement tie out where you're often kind of struggling because uh, they only want to look at one invoice, but it's one that was paid along with 10 others in a payment. So this would probably help you do that. And uh, so that's why I said, if you're not thinking of a reason for it now, maybe in March, April, whenever you do your audit, uh, you might want to look at something like this. Uh, so uh, surprise this wasn't released before. Uh, I know it's something people have asked for, so good to see it. Yeah, I definitely think that's going to help with the sequencing, seeing when the payments come in or are generated, and then just being able to use those custom reports and report on that. I definitely think it will be a huge audit tool as well. And also, we now have the new beta list feature for a lot more objects within Intact. So this is something we've talked about in the previous releases. And if you haven't seen it yet, I am going to go ahead and switch over and show you. 
the new beta list feature. So this was previously only available for vendors. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. You can see here, this is the standard list that we see in Sage. Now I can also turn on the beta list feature. So lists are great. You can have all sorts of custom views, but you know it's a little clunky and we are locked into a lot of uh, features there. What the beta list is going to do is give you a little more dynamic viewing of these lists. So you can see here, this is a typical vendor list. Now, the layout's a little funny. Maybe I want a little less here in this column. Now we can go ahead and size our columns however we like. So that's a very, very useful feature um, because a lot of times it'll get cut off and it's hard to look at. Now we still retain all of our filtering. We still retain all of our sorting, um, but we're given this added flexibility to where we can you know, one, resize, and then two, just drag and drop. So if we don't like the order, uh, we can just go in. There's no more going in and editing your view, having to go find your view, edit your view, switch through the, the different screens, trying to find what you're wanting to do. Um, you're able to just drag and drop them and order them. And then if we just want to add new, you can go to configure your columns. And we can just click any of these columns that we, we want to add in. So as you can see, this is just a lot more dynamic, a lot easier to use. And just given that added flexibility of, um, of being able to size your columns even is huge. And then of course we still retain like um, these hyperlinks. So if you wanted to click on total due for this vendor, you know, it will give you the pop-up, show you the total due. If I actually want to see information about my vendor, I get this really neat side-by-side -side view with the beta list. So here is a list of my vendors, and then here's the actual vendor record side-by-side. -side. So this list feature and these list tools will be available to all of these new objects within Intact. So you can see here, we will have the list view on attachments, attachment folders, departments, locations, and the different tax lists. So that's something that um, I'm personally very excited for because I, I really like that um, that view. Oh, one thing I didn't show, you can also freeze the columns as well. So it makes for easier viewing. Um, so this is just something to be very excited for because if you're a fan of custom views in your list, um, this is just really exciting. And I think it's a better way to look at these, um, these lists. Yeah, I can't wait to see them roll that out to uh, the rest of the objects, but they are making good progress. Uh, so next up is a bank transaction assistant that's going to be available in cash management. This is an early adopter um, feature, so meaning it's not going to roll out automatically to all customers tomorrow. Uh, if you're interested, um, you can let us know and we can help get you on that list. Can't guarantee you will get on it. Um, you know, Intact doesn't specifically say how many uh, customers they'll let be on that list. Um, you know, they just want to make sure it works fully before it's released to the general audience. Um, but uh, if you do get access, what this is, uh, if you're already familiar with using either the bank feed or importing your bank transactions when you're doing your, your reconciliation, you know that you can, uh, aside from just matching transactions, you can actually create some transactions. And currently that's uh, only your interest um, uh, and service charges. You know, it's pretty limited in what you can actually create. Uh, now there is a feature where you can tag a customer on your bank transactions. And what this does is it enables you to then create a cash application. So this is like creating a transaction based off of a bank feed um, record. Um, so how this works is when you, you know, receive a payment, you'll first assign a customer to the bank transactions. Uh, you could possibly automate this. You can create an assignment rule. For example, if you have a customer named Acme Inc. And whenever they pay you in the bank detail, uh, the word ACME shows up. You could have a matching rule, a matching assignment rule that whenever that shows up to assign uh, that customer. Um, and you can also just uh, manually assign one. Uh, and in addition to um, being able to tag a customer, another enhancement is you can receive payments in bulk. 
So, uh, you know, you were already able to do one payment for multiple invoices across the same customer. But now you could also, well, in early adopter stage, I should clarify, you could receive a payment across multiple customers and multiple invoices across those customers. So maybe you have uh, a customer hierarchy where it's a parent child, you know, it's a big enough customer of yours that you have them broken out as different customers for some reason. And they often pay you um, once for multiple customers and multiple invoices, uh, you would actually be able to break that uh, payment out within the system. You know, you have to do that artificially right now. Um, so if you had a payment that was for four different customers, you'd have to break it out into four separate payments, which makes reconciliation a little harder. So this would add the ability to have one payment, multiple customers, multiple invoices. Um, the cash application feature uh, is pretty much just the same in that second window. You might recognize that looks similar to um, uh, the cash application feature in there. Um, let me see if there is anything. Oh, and uh, you can also, if you don't have an invoice yet for those customers, or maybe you only have some of them, uh, you can have also create an AR advance. So that would be basically a payment on account for those customers, and you could apply that advance to invoices when they go in there. So maybe you have a, you know, a revenue and payment cycle where you get uh, a payment and then you generate the invoices or validate them and post the invoices later. You could have those as an AR advance and then post it later. So really great option to uh, enhance uh, bank reconciliations, keep that cash balance a little more accurate and more timely in the system. Yeah, it's a great way to also get more granular with those um, with those entries without having to separate them out piece by piece and then reconcile them all later. Um, so once again, a very cool feature that Sage is rolling out. Uh, David did mention that it is in an early adopter stage. If you're not familiar with what early adopter is, this is kind of like a beta release um, for a test group. You would have to sign up to try to be part of the early adopter program. And with that, they typically have, you know, product meetings uh, weekly, making sure that, you know, they get feedback. So that is a requirement that if you do get into an early adopter program that you would um, provide a lot of feedback for Sage. Um, but this also means that this is something that they're working on quite a bit and we can expect in a full release uh, fairly soon most of the time. And then also recognizing sales revenue on contract uh, line invoices. So this is a new feature. Um, what if you don't always need to defer the revenue on a contract and simply want to record the revenue when you build the contract line? This is a brand new feature that is going to allow you to do so. Um, it does require RevRec and contracts. So that is, you'd have to be specifically using those modules. But this is an area that Sage has been working on. Um, quite a bit release over release um, is the contracts module. So we continue to see uh, improvements to this. And this is another one that was going to help streamline your workflow and you wouldn't have to go in and make new contracts if you wanted to you know, recognize the revenue immediately. So very exciting release if you're using contracts module. Yeah, I definitely uh, had some SaaS experience in my past where you know you'd have ad hoc uh, invoicing. And if you had to go through and set up a revenue schedule for just a quick one-off, um, that did not feel like an efficiency gain. So that's a, that's a really great addition. <clears throat> uh, another one that I'm really excited about is the project summary um, being included, including budget information. So projects or grants uh, for not-for-profit, um, same module, different name, depending on your, your industry. Um, what this does is it brings in uh, budget information into the project summary. So if you're already used to that module, you've probably noticed the tab uh, where you see a lot of the columns listed below. And on the far right with the uh, blue text, you can see there's now a budget column. Uh, so this is really great because maybe you're looking at that uh, summary bef uh, already but they don't mean anything to you because you're not sure what period it represents or you're not sure uh, if you're on target. So you're looking at that, but then you're quickly flipping to the report tab um, or report module to actually find out, are you on target or not? So being able to see this all within the project module is great. Um, 
it is nice for limited users like project users in Intact who maybe don't have access to reporting. Uh, so they might not have to ask quite as many questions to the finance team. Uh, they could just see for themselves. Uh, you'll notice a couple of things. Um, uh, first of all, uh, that text for budget is in blue, not just because I wanted to highlight that it's new, but that's actually a hyperlink. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, if you click on that, you actually see the budget report that it's referencing. And uh, at the top of that selection, you notice that you can toggle within there through multiple budgets. So if you have several budgets loaded, you can, you can go through all of them. Maybe you have a budget and multiple forecasts. Um, and you can even uh, toggle through account groups. So that's pretty powerful on the fly reporting within a module that did not have that before. So this is a pretty impressive update. Um, haven't seen something like this in quite a while, um, but really fantastic. It, again, it's this ability to drill down and intact is something they've been doing for a while. So adding it here is, is just great. And I, I love that, that option to toggle through budgets. I think, you know, like I was saying, people having to go into the report module uh, to actually validate anything. Uh, this is just gonna save a lot of time and clicks right there. Yeah, very excited to see that. Also, if you had, you know, prospect budget or an uh, adjusted budget, being able to see that per project quickly you might not even have to worry about going out and building out reports. So that is a, a very useful feature. Also in another early adopter stage, um, introducing the partial ownership through tiered consolidation. So this has to do with if you have a um, large percentage um, controlling equity and that's something that you need to report on. Now, this is an early adopter program that is full right now, um, so they aren't accepting anyone at this time. Uh, but if you do have to report on percentage ownership and have consolidations, this is going to help you um, save a lot of time, both with reporting and then any corrections and calculations. This is going to all be there ready to, ready to go. It's going to make those proper calculations for you. Um, so. With this, you'd be able to create the ownership structures with the entities that you want to consolidate. You would be able to enter the percentage of ownership for the relative entities, the relevant entities. Uh, you'd be able to select the consolidation method that you want and then run a consolidation book and then view that all um, with the proper reporting. So if that's something that you're concerned with, partial ownership and consolidation, um, this will be really, really useful when it comes out. Yeah, I think that's just uh, uh, intact continually being ahead of the competition on its multi-entity uh, structure. I mean, they've been, they've had that since their very beginning. It's always been, you know, top of the line, uh, even compared against larger ERPs, uh, like that kind of um, reporting structure, you usually have to get from a third party tool. So them adding it uh, natively is, is pretty incredible. Uh, another feature that uh, um, is being added is the you can restrict GL transactions to the entity level. So in multi-entity systems, which everybody technically is now because everybody now has a top level, we always recommend uh, working at the top level whenever possible. Uh, this just adds the, the most functionality and visibility. Um, uh, but if for some reason you would like to have journal entries only posted at the entity level, maybe you have uh, your entities are very independent, like you have an accounting staff in each uh, of those entities and you want them to just uh, actually slide into that entity each time and not do any top level transactions, you can do that. Um, previously, you might know if this was something you were doing that you could restrict sub ledger transactions to the entity level. And this adds the ability to restrict general ledger transactions to the entity level. Uh, so uh, now you would have the ability to either have them at the entity level or at the top level. So you can restrict at the top level as well. We're just showing you that it could be at entity level. Um, so if this is something you're interested in, um, definitely research it, reach out to us. Uh, there are some considerations you wanna make um, in configuration, in workflow and in existing transactions. So for example, uh, before you start doing this, you would want to make sure that all top-level transactions are either approved or posted. 
Um, and if you have any recurring journal entries set up to post at the top level, you would need to change them to post to the ND level. Otherwise, the recurring journal, journal entries would no longer work. Uh, so definitely research, reach out. If that's something you're considering, we can give you a warning of, of anything else you might want to consider before doing that. And then also wanted to mention that Sage Intact Real Estate module is getting a few performance upgrades. So they're going to have better performance on their property leases, units, and tenant. And then also with some ease of use, um, they're including tool tips um, on some of the pages like lease activation, uh, terminating leases, and the lease search field. Um, also it's going to give you greater visibility into your business. Um, they've added you know, new pop-up notifications to alert you about any management fees or late charges that you may need to collect. And then also a new management uh, fee preview journal. Um, so just keeping you on top of that, making sure you aren't missing out on anything. And this is another section of Sage where we see just continued growth, continued enhancement um, in the real estate module. So if that's something that your organization needs, um, it is really turning out to be quite a great tool um, for that. And then just wanted to discuss a few uh, release resources. So we mentioned earlier that this isn't a comprehensive list. Um, this is just some of the things we wanted hi to highlight from this release. Uh, but within this uh, presentation, you will have a link to the full release notes here, and then also access to the Sage Intact community. Also, you can see here, we know when to expect these releases well in advance. So release three will be coming out August 18th, and we can be looking forward to release four this year on November 10th. Um, now, if you're also curious, we can look at where we can find this within our environment. So you can see here, I have a Sage Intact environment, and I'm gonna go to my home screen. Now your home screen may be different based on your permissions. Some people like to start out in certain sections, but you should always be able to just click this home screen here. And Sage, a few weeks before a release comes out, we'll typically have this coming soon, 2023 release three. And if you see down here, we have the release notes. So this will be all the full release um, for the quarterly release, release three. And if you want to view this a little bit differently, this is just the full list. Each of these will tell you the new release feature. And then if there's any more information, a hyperlink. But if you're only concerned with, say, cash management, we can jump in here and see what releases are related to cash management. If I'm only concerned with AP, same thing. I can jump right to the AP related release notes. Um, and then even if I was interested in only Sage Impact Real Estate, I could hop down here and see what's going on with Sage Impact Real Estate. And it doesn't end there because we can also use this to view the prior release notes. If you're curious about what's come out recently, or if you may have missed your release and, and wanted to know what may have been on that, down here you can view the full release notes for each of these releases um, as well. And then also the community. Um, if you're on your home screen and you scroll down, we have this very useful resources section. So Intact Help is the Intact Help Center. This is where you can go ahead and type in anything you may be trying to do, like delete a bill or uh, you know edit a vendor, and it will give you all the steps on how to do that. Um, the Intact Community, this is just a very useful resource where people can go out there. I'll go ahead and sign into mine if you're not familiar with this. People can go out and have discussions about what they may be trying to do with the system. And then my favorite, the ideas section. Uh, this is where you can go out and uh, log ideas or for improvements for the system, or you can go out and see what people may be requesting. So you can see here, we have uh, quite a few votes for the ability to add custom payment methods at the AP module. Um, so Sage does use this um, quite a bit to inform their roadmap and things to work on. So a lot of these feature requests that get rolled out with releases, um, a lot of them do start as ideas here. Um, and Sage really does listen to their customers and you know wants to make improvements to the system. 
So if there's something that you want out of the system that you're not currently getting, uh, it's a great idea to go ahead and throw your idea out on the community uh, section. And then if it gets enough upvotes, you know, it may be becoming, it may become a release in the future. <laughs> All right, and David? Yeah, uh, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, if you, uh, as you probably saw, we only went over some of the releases when Michael was showing the release notes. There's others. If you have questions about ones we didn't cover, reach out to us or any that we did discuss, let us know. Our names and contacts are, contact information is there. Uh, so ask us anything, uh, even if it's not actually related to uh, these specific release updates. Um, we're always happy to hear from uh, customers and prospects who might have some intact questions and we can uh, get you on an early adopter list or uh, just inform you about um, some of the options available here. And so, you know, like we said, uh, there's another release coming up in November. Uh, you're probably on our mailing list since you're on this webinar. Uh, we'll invite you to that uh, release update, the preview. We usually do it the day before Intact rolls it out. So watch for that and join in next time.